around this joint. Around this joint. Around this joint. Around this joint. Please be advised that this story contains mature themes and strong language. Not suitable for ages 17 and under, or anyone over 18 with their panties in a bunch. It's Saturday night, 10.30 p.m. Destiny and Adonis are pulling up outside of Destiny's apartment, a real nice complex in Decatur, Georgia. Adonis is driving a Ford F-350 Super Duty with the black on black everything. Black rims, black tires, black paint, black interior. The moon is glistening off the fresh wax job and the paint is shining. The windows are cracked letting the night breeze blow in and smooth jazz music is playing. Adonis turns off the engine and Destiny reaches for her door handle. Hey yo Destiny, so how many dates is it gonna take before you let me open up all the doors for you? <laughs> I'm sorry, I promise it is not on purpose. Adonis hops out and walks to Destiny's side. He opens her door and she gets out blushing. He can't help but smile at her. <laughs> it's all right. Hopefully I can spoil you enough and eventually you won't reach for another door handle when you're around me. They begin walking towards her building. When they reach the front door, she stops and places her hands at her sides and gives him a cute smirk. Adonis reaches out and holds the door open for her. See, now that wasn't so hard, was it? Yes, it was. <laughs> no, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Destiny uses her key fob to unlock the main door. Adonis holds that one open for her too. As she walks past him into the building, she can't help but catch a whiff of his cologne. He smells good. Hints of citrus and lavender mingled with notes of spices and woods. All she can think is that it's the perfect blend of what she wants a man to smell like. Adonis is six foot four with a caramel complexion, deep hazel eyes and a full beard trimmed with such precision it makes you wonder if his barber was a surgeon in a former life. His fresh taper fade haircut is accentuated with a sea of perfect waves, the kind that will make Mr. C.D. Murray proud. She steals a quick glance at his physique. He's muscular with a wide back and broad shoulders. High school and college football definitely did his body good. They began walking up the stairs. Destiny, she's five foot nine with creamy cocoa skin, full lips, almond-shaped eyes, and a head full of shoulder-length 3C natural hair, dyed burgundy on the ends. As they go up the steps, he can't help but look at her pretty long legs. The heels she has on are making her calf muscles flex with each step she takes. Her dress is just short enough to be flirty, and he can tell by her thighs that everything underneath that fabric is thicker than cold grits. He knows she says she lives on the third floor, but with a view this magnificent, he wouldn't mind two or three more flights of stairs. He can't help but feel excited walking her to her door. The first few dates they went on, she insisted on driving herself. Last week, she finally let him pick her up and drop her off downstairs, outside. He knows going inside of her apartment tonight is a long shot, but if he can finally get a kiss, then walking her upstairs is good enough. As they reach her door, she stops and turns around to face him. You know, Dawn, I had a really good time tonight. With everything going on, you know, the virus, companies shutting down and stuff, it was nice to get out and laugh and forget about our worries for a minute. Yeah, I'm glad they didn't cancel the show. Man, that nigga Carlos Miller is my favorite comedian, for real. <laughs> Man, that nigga funny on Instagram, and he even more hilarious in person. I think we all needed those laughs tonight. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get hip to him until the 85 South show. He is really talented. Remember that one joke um, about the kids? About the kids. Hungry? Yeah, yeah. They don't eat good at school, and then they come home hungry all the time. <laughs> always had to die laughing. Oh, yo, so let me find out you are 85 percent of yo. Yep. Man, we've definitely got to hang out one night. 
watch some episodes on YouTube. Okay, okay. That sounds like a plan. Maybe next weekend or something? Well, I better get inside. I need a good night's rest, and I'm going to try and relax tomorrow. My boss acts like the world is ending and ain't no telling how many emails she is going to shoot off like it ain't a Sunday. I promise she has no life. A Sunday? Yo, I hope you don't plan on answering them emails tomorrow. It's the Lord's (laughs) Day. The Sabbath. You know what I mean? No, I'm not answering a thing. I'll probably cuss her out in my head and talk out loud to myself about how annoying she is, but I won't reply until Monday. (laughs) Word, 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 word. That's what's up. Adonis begins looking at Destiny with passion in his eyes. He wants to kiss her, but he can't tell if he has the green light just yet. He looks into her eyes, then glances down at her lips. Her eyes follow his, and she slowly licks her lips, biting the bottom one. He knows that she wants to kiss as badly as he does. So he leans in and she closes her eyes. The smell of his cologne is heightening her anticipation. She's holding her breath, waiting for their lips to lock. He gets closer, but just before he closes his eyes and connects the kiss, he's stopped in his tracks about an inch away from her mouth. Hey, your destiny. Your door look like it's open. Huh? What did you say? Turn. Look, your door is open. Did you leave it open by accident? No, I would never do that. Panic appears on her face as she turns around and sees her apartment door is slightly ajar and the living room lamp she left on is off. Destiny pushes her door all the way open, flips on the light switch and makes a beeline for her bedroom, disappearing towards the back of the apartment. Adonis instinctively walks in after her but doesn't go in any further than just inside the doorway. Before he can call out to her, she comes back holding a black Desert Eagle 357 mat. She begins frantically walking through the apartment, opening and closing the doors to every room and closet. Adonis starts following behind her as she goes room to room. He's given her just enough space to conduct her search, but he's also letting her feel his presence so she knows that he has her back. Once they make their way back to the living room, she flops down on the couch, tosses the gun on the coffee table, Adonis is standing in the middle of the floor. He doesn't know what to say. Hey, yo, Destiny. You all right? Is everything still here? Yeah, I'm okay. I didn't even bother to see if anything is missing. I doubt he took anything. He? He? Wait, 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 wait. So you already know who was in here? Is he the reason for the gun, that 357 Magnum that you just threw on a coffee table like that? Yes, I know who was here. It was my ex, Judah. <laughs> Judah? <laughs> Judah Jacobson? Like from the Bible? Yeah, his mama gave him a biblical name, but he's the devil all damn day. Well, do you know why Judah was here? To torment me, of course. We broke up like six months ago, but he wouldn't leave me alone. He trolled me on Instagram and Twitter, and I had to deactivate my accounts and create new ones three times. I've changed my number twice, and I was planning to get the locks changed again in a few weeks. Get the locks changed? Damn. Well, how many times you had to change them, Shouty? Hmm. To this will be the third time. The first two times he was staying in here and he kicked the door in. Each time the leasing office has to change or replace the locks, the fee increases. It's going to cost me $200 this time. $200? Yo, wait, why was this nigga kicking in doors? The first time was because I was in the shower and playing music. He forgot his key, and I didn't hear my phone vibrating, and he convinced himself that I was here in the shower with another guy. Kicked in the door. $100 to get it fixed that time. Wow, that's crazy. Crazy is the second time. I was riding with my boss and coworkers to a company retreat for the weekend, and he kept calling me, so finally I answered. He heard a man's voice in the car, and he lost his damn mind. 
He kicked in the door, he tossed everything in the living room around and then left. My neighbor came home and thought I was robbed. I got a call from the police and my leasing office. We had to turn around so they could bring me home. I paid $150 to replace the locks and missed the entire retreat. I had him leave the key when he finally moved, but knowing him, he has a bunch of copies. All right, so wait. Was he putting his hands on you, though? Oh, he grabbed me and he shoved me a few times. Uh, he's never actually hit me, but I could tell it was in him, and it was only a matter of time before it came out. Baby girl, baby girl, baby girl, what are you waiting for, man? You need to change those locks ASAP. Listen. I don't have the extra money right now, and I was hoping that after I filed the restraining order, he'd just leave me alone. All right, so Tech, what's your cash app or your Venmo? No, I will take care of it. You don't have to worry about it. Look, I do have to worry about it because I'm the one that walked in on it, and I'm dating you. Man, I'm not about to know what's going on and not be accountable to do something to help you handle it. I'm only going to ask you one more time with your cash app. <sighs> Destiny J1287. Alright, that's Destiny, no child. J1287. Alright, let me know when it comes through. Got it. Wait, it's $200. Why did you send three? Hey, yo, Sean, they just called them people and had them come out tomorrow. If they change extra for the same day and weekend services, then boom, you already got it. You know you didn't have to do that, right? But seriously, thank you. I promise I'll pay you back in a few weeks. Shawty, you don't have to pay me back. I just need to make sure that you're safe. Destiny gets up and walks around the coffee table to Adonis. She wraps her arms around his neck and he wraps his arms around her waist and pulls her in for a hug. They hold each other tightly, neither of them wanting to be the first to let go. As they come out of the hug, Adonis looks back towards the apartment door. It's been left open this whole time. All right, so Chet, I better go ahead and head out. You need to get you some rest to prepare for all them emails your boss about to send you tomorrow. And I got to head back to the other side of town. <laughs> okay, but before you go, isn't there something you plan to do before all of this popped off? Hey, yo, as a matter of fact, it was. Come here. Adonis pulls her back towards him and leans in. They lock lips and engage in a passionate first kiss. His strong arms are holding her in all the right places, making her feel warm and safe. Even though she's already in her own apartment, this is the first time in a long time that Destiny remembers what it feels like to truly be at home. After they kiss, he holds her for a few seconds longer, looking into her eyes and smiling. She walks him to the door. All right, so Pete, make sure you keep that strap near you at all times. Lock this door, put something up against it, and call them people first thing in the morning. All right, baby girl? Okay. Yes. Will do. Thank you. Good night, Destiny. Good night, Dawn. Adonis walks towards the stairs. Destiny closes and locks the door. Then she slides the large chair in her living room across the floor and pushes it up against it. She grabs a couple of books and some knickknacks and props them on the chair so if they fall, they'll make noise. She kicks off her heels and lets out a sigh. Walking into the kitchen, she grabs a bottle of water from the fridge and turns on the light over the stove. She flips off the other lights, grabs her gun, and heads to her bedroom. Destiny's bedroom is decorated in various shades of pink, teal, and purple. There's a pile of My Little Pony pillows at the foot of her bed. She slides out of her clothes and goes into the bathroom for a shower. After putting on her pajamas, she lays across the bed, grabs her phone, and calls her best friend, Latoria. Hey, girl. What's up? Girl, guess 
What? What? You busted wide open in the back of that big ass truck? Ew! No! No? Then you did it in the living room? No. <laughs> I know you ain't take that nigga in that bedroom with all those fluffy ass pillows and do it there. Oh my. Tori, stop. We did not have sex, okay? At all. Not anywhere. And please leave my pillows out of this. Oh, well. Well, what is it then? <sighs> Judah was here tonight. Wait, what? Judah? Oh, Lord. I thought you went out with Adonis. I did. And then he walked me to my apartment, and when we got up here, we saw that my door was cracked open. The lights were off, and you know I always leave the living room lamp on when I'm coming home after dark. <sighs> Was that jackass still there? Nah, we searched every room, and no one was here. Girl, I was so freaked out, I immediately went and grabbed Lily. I was ready to empty the clip in Judah's ass if he hopped out on me. <laughs> Bitch, I know you did not pipe up cock diesel <laughs> about your old nigga in front of your new nigga. Girl, I am so dead. Girl, yes, the fuck I did. Okay? It was crazy because Don was following me around as I searched. He didn't know what the hell was happening, but he looked ready too. That's what I'm talking about. He was ready. And you need to hurry up and get those locks changed. I told you to stop being prideful. I got you. I will lend you the money. Oh, I'm so tired of hearing this. Look, there's no need. He gave me the money tonight. And he gave me an extra $100 in order to get them to come out tomorrow. He was heated once I told him about Judah. Now that's what the fuck I'm talking about. You better go, Adonis. Girl, I know, right? I was caught off guard and hesitant, but he wouldn't take no for an answer. Heffa, after all of that, you still ain't gave him some. Look, I am not a prostitute, okay? Why do you try and make everything about sex? Neither one of us was thinking about sex at the moment. Plus, we've only been on like six dates. We've only been on like six dates. How about it's only been six months since the last time you got some, uh, Mm, mm. All I'm saying is, you were spreading it wide for that jackass, lame-ass, bitch-ass, I don't like him ass Judah. Now you got you a real nigga, and you don't even want to see what he working with. Girl, you better let him rock your world. Look, I do want to do it, but it has to be the right moment and the right mood. Hell, tonight was the first time I ever even let him in my building. And if it wasn't for the Judah nonsense, he wouldn't even have been inside my apartment. Mm-hmm. I know you, Destiny, and I get it. You'll do it when you're ready. I'm just a little worried, girl. I ain't gonna lie. Between Lily and the gun and Idris the vibrator, the next thing you know, you're gonna be calling me talking about you got a cat named Tigger. I am definitely not getting a cat. I hope not, because that'll be the last time I'm at your crib. My grandmama had three crazy cats. I hated those bitches, and those bitches hated me. That's probably because they could tell you were a dog. <laughs> shit, you can blame that shit on my mama. She's the one who kept trying until she had a girl, and then I had to grow up with five brothers. You have a little bit of dog in you, too. <laughs> Plus, girl, you know, these bitches ain't out here, they ain't complaining. They love the little dog in they. Girl, they ain't complaining to you, okay? I'm the one they come calling talking about. Destiny, why doesn't she love me? Why won't Tori be with me? I'll be glad when you find a girl you like a lot so you can sit your ass down, fall in love, and stop breaking hearts all over Decatur. Mm-hmm. Maybe one day I'll have for that love shit, but for right now, it is what it is. How we get on my relationships anyway? We supposed to be talking about you. So, what's up? Did anything else happen, or did you just send that man packing? I didn't put him out. He was leaving anyway. But we did kiss. Bitch, you should have led with that. You come talking about Judas, bitch ass, when you should have been telling me how Adonis was tonguing you down, ho. So, what's up? How was it? 
Man, Tori, it was so good. His lips were so soft. He pulled me in close and he held me so tight. It was like all he wanted to do was kiss. And I have never had a guy like that. Like there wasn't anything else behind it. It was sweet and gentle and just the most perfect first kiss ever. Oh, listen to you. You over there gushing. Got me over here horny and shit. Woo, girl, I am so happy for you. Thank you, bestie. Me too. It felt so nice. Girl, we didn't talk him up. Hold on. Dawn is on my other end, probably calling to tell me he made it home safe. And good night. So don't hang up, okay? okay? Hey, handsome. What's up, baby girl? Hey, check this out. Can you buzz me up? I'm downstairs. You mean downstairs, like at my building right now? Yep, that'd be me, downstairs at your building, right now. Oof, um, okay, uh, one second, I guess I'll get up and hit the buzzer. Tori, he's here, he's downstairs talking about buzz him Who's up. Who's here, Adonis, now? Yes, and I don't know what to do, I'm not even cute anymore. Bitch, what you mean you don't know what to do? You gonna let that nigga upstairs and you gonna know he gonna want more than just a kiss, all right? <laughs> oh, shut up, okay? Let me take this bonnet off and I'm gonna try and get cute then before he comes up here. All right, girl, but listen here, best friend. Now is the time. You gonna ride that face. You gonna drop it like it's hot. You gonna pop that coochie. Bitch, you gonna do something tonight. You know what? I'm hanging up on you. You crazy, and ain't nobody fucking anybody tonight. Bye. Girl, bye, because you know you calling me tomorrow with all the nasty details. But you know, don't be a lame. Safe sex is for lames. Love you, girl. Good night. Love you too, stupid. Destiny hangs up the phone. She snatches her bonnet off and runs her hands through her hair, shaking her head vigorously, trying to make her curls fluff back up. She runs to the bathroom and switches around to mouthwash, washes her face and puts on lip gloss. She goes to the living room and flips the lights on. She hits the button to let Adonis in and slides the chair and books away from the door. She runs back into her bedroom and grabs a pair of silver hoop earrings. She puts them in while she's standing at the door, looking through the peephole, waiting. Adonis knocks on the door and she opens it. He's standing there, looking fine as hell. Wearing a gray hoodie and gray sweatpants and holding a small duffel bag. Hey, yo, look, Shawty. Please don't be mad at me. Man, I got home, took me a shower. I was getting ready for bed. Man, but then I just thought about that look on your face when you thought that nigga Judah was over here. So you know I had to come back over here and make sure you was all right. I knew I wasn't going to be able to rest, so I tossed on some clothes and came back. I knew if I asked you first, you'd probably say no. Because you know you are independent and shit. So check this. I'm asleep on the couch. I bought my own stuff. I just want to make sure you're safe. Is that all right with you? Destiny doesn't really know what to say. So she just opens the door wider and steps out of the way for Adonis to come in. You damn right I would have said no. But since you're here, the couch is right there. There's water and juice in the fridge, and you're welcome to anything you see inside. I think the remote is on the TV stand. I don't care what you do with the lights. And I think you saw where the bathroom is earlier between my room and the paint studio. Yeah, I remember. I'm sorry if I'm a little weird. You just keep catching me off guard tonight, and it's been a while since I've had a man over here, let alone spending the night. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't mean to make you feel uncomfortable. Like I said earlier, I just want to make sure you safe. Look, I get it. And I appreciate you, seriously. All right, so look, let's go ahead and call it a night. We had a great date, a little semi-scared. Hey, y'all ain't even gonna front. That kiss was everything. And then here I go all unannounced, making you feel all weird, trying to make sure you safe and shit. 
I think that's enough eventfulness for one Saturday. So you go ahead, go to sleep, and get your beauty rest. I'm going to make myself comfortable right here on this couch. And just know, if anything come through that motherfucking door tonight, they going to have to get to me to get to you. And I fight like a motherfucking silverback gorilla, you heard me? So it ain't going to be easy. <laughs> yes, it has been an interesting evening. But I can vibe with that plan, so I will see you in the morning. Good night. Good night, Destiny. Destiny starts walking towards her room. Adonis kicks off his sneakers, walks to the couch, and sets his bag down. He looks back over his shoulder and sees her standing there. She's looking at him. Hey, yo, Destiny. You all right? Yeah, I'm good. I just want to say thank you for coming back to check on me. I really do appreciate you being here tonight. She walks up and wraps her arms around his neck. He instinctively wraps his arms around her waist. She leans in and they share a soft, sweet peck on the lips. Destiny then goes to bed. Adonis turns on the TV, flips off the lights, and sitting down on the couch, he begins flipping channels. Around this joint, it's around this joint. Around this joint, 